Hi, my name is Justin Odisho, and in this episode of Every Filter in Photoshop Explained, we're going to be taking a look at the Blur Gallery. So although there's five of them here, if you click any one of them, it'll open up its own little gallery menu. And on the right hand side, you can see all five of these options, which are Field Blur, Iris Blur, Tilt Shift Path, and Spin Blur. So I'll just go through them step by step. These are similar to the things in the Blur menu, but you can see we have this little different user interface to work with. Now this little circle here is kind of like the point of interest or the center point. And this side wheel is the strength amount. So I can make it larger or smaller. This field blur is kind of just like a uh, focus blur or like a field of vision. So the stronger it is, the more out of the field of view it gets blurred, the less the more it gets just back to normal sharpness. And the next one we have is iris blur. So this one does have a couple of different points. So this, the point of interest does count in this case. You see within this little circular iris, it's not blurred and then everything that we set outside of it will become blurred. So in this way we can create little masked blurs or vignetted blurs and we can bring in the focal point or the strength of that blur or the feathering See, in this case, there's not feathering, it's just blurred and then not blurred. And the other thing that I haven't mentioned too is that you can create multiple points of blur. So as you see, I can create like one little blurred oval here and then click and add another point right here. So we can create little hot zones or little focal points that we want depending on the different image, it might have different creative uses. And if you ever wanted to delete any one of those, you could click on the point and just press delete. The next one that we have is tilt shift. This one can be really cool for creating different fields of focus. So you can see it's kind of like a gradient where what's in the middle will be sharp and then this gets blurred and then also in the back forward it gets blurred as well. So I can change the different lines. In this case maybe I just want to make this part of the city blurred and then bring this forward. A common example you'll see this used for is to create like a tiny city effect out of a whole city. And you can kind of see how when I add a lot of blur, a lot of tilt shift blur in this way and set the settings just right, it does feel a little bit almost like we created a tiny city. And you can also change the distortion amount. So this adds a little bit of lens distortion too, which adds to that perspective shift. But if you ever want to actually see one of these, you can press OK and see what it looks like. But going back into the blur gallery, the next one we have is path blur. So this one's cool. It's almost like a motion blur, but beyond just a straight angle, you can also make it blur on a path. So I can make it go up and at a bend. See if I bend that there. We're actually getting a unique type of motion blur that's bending along a path that you normally wouldn't get with just the regular blur tools in the blur menu. In the settings, you can change the speed or the kind of like the strength, the amount that it tapers in. Some of these blurs are quite heavy, so if you ever need, you can turn off the preview. If you just want to make lines and kind of guess at what's gonna happen. And you can create multiple different angles. And then if I ever just turn the preview back on, it will try to generate what we did there. So sometimes you might need to do that if you're working on a machine that can't handle it. Lastly, we have spin blur, pretty self-explanatory. It creates a circular blur. You can change the strength and amount and also the size of the point and the shape of it. And like I've been saying, you can create multiple different points. And another thing that we have underneath that whenever we're working is these little menus here, such as effects. So you can change like the specular highlights of any of these or the type of glow or bokeh or threshold. In this case, you see we get a really cool almost lens blur type of effect. And also there's a noise section if you wanted to add a little bit of noise or textured grain. And also you can adjust some of the motion effects such as the strobe strength. You'll kind of see we get a little bit of different texture on that blur. The strobe flashes as well. And you can get a little bit of different lighting and texture if you adjust these sections. 
So thank you so much for watching. You can subscribe to my channel to stay tuned for all my new videos, and I'll see you over in the next episode where we cover distort effects.